Let's jump into our very first problem. Let's say that we want to simplify the mixed number 1 and 4 eighths. What does this actually mean? It means that I have, for instance, one whole pizza, but on top of that I have four slices out of eight for another pizza. So if I chop another pizza, a second pizza, into eight slices and take four of them, I have that, plus I also have a one. So when you have the one next to the four eighths, there's like an invisible plus sign right here. This really means one whole pizza plus four eighths of another pizza. So if we wanted to talk about what this might actually look like, it means we have one whole pizza that goes with the one here, and then four eighths of a pizza is one, and then two, and then three, and then four, four eighths of the other of the other pizza. So one and four eighths. So this is how much I actually have. Now, how do we simplify this? How do we actually simplify it? Well, what you basically do to begin with is you kind of ignore the whole number. The whole number is not really, doesn't need to be simplified, it's just a whole number. So really we have to simplify the fraction part. So what I want you to do is go over here and put an equal sign, and then you rewrite the one, and then the four eighths we have to simplify. So we can write four eighths again, draw your little longer fraction bar. Now, what can we divide top and bottom by to divide and simplify this? We could divide by two, of course, but what we'll do is we'll, if we divide by two, we'll get another answer and then we'll have to simplify it again. And in this case, we see right away that we could divide the top by four and we could also divide the bottom by four because they're both divisible by four. So divide top by four, divide bottom by four. What do we get? We still have a whole number of one, but when we do have this, four divided by four is one and eight divided by four is two. So it's one and a half. This is the final answer. Now let's see if this actually makes sense. This new mixed number that we have is one right here and uh, one whole pizza and then we have a half of a pizza. Does this look like it's like exactly what we have over here? And the answer is of course it does. We started with one and four eighths so the slices were kind of smaller, but we had four of them. But this four eighths really amounts to another half of a pizza. So you see, writing it as one and four eighths and writing it as one and a half, it just changes the way in which you write it down. You know, it's like poetry. You can write poems and there's different words you can use. You have freedom, right? But you can get the same idea across with slightly different words. Here, we can have this much pizza. It's exactly the same amount as this much pizza, but we can write it in different ways. And that's what we're doing here. So one and four eighths is the same as one and a half. Now let's move along and take a look at what happens to the next problem. Let's say we have the problem two and two sixth, and we want to simplify this fraction. Well, first of all, uh, let's go ahead, instead of doing the magnets first, let's go ahead and simplify this, and then we'll see if the answer makes sense. So the two, the whole number of the two doesn't need to be simplified at all. So we just rewrite that. But the two six, we believe we're going to be able to simplify. What can we divide top and bottom by here to make it simpler? We can divide the top by two and the bottom by two. So the answer that we're going to get is a whole number of two and then two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three because three times two is six. So we believe the answer is two and a third. So what we're saying is that two and two sixths is exactly the same amount of stuff as two and a third even though they, they are written down differently and they look different but actually they're not different. They're exactly the same. That's why there's an equal sign here. So let's see if we can make sense of this. This right here is two, right? Whole number of two, right? And then I have two six. So let me go over here and grab the sixth. I have uh, one, two, three, four. Whoop, gonna need a little bit more here. Uh, we only had two, sorry about that. Two and two sixth. So we had two slices, uh, uh, two sixth here. One six, two six. The slices, they were slicing the six pieces. The, the pizza was sliced in the six pieces and we only have two of them, so we have two holes plus two sixths. Now, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna have to steal some of these over here. All right, so what we have over here for this, let me get drag this down over here, I think. Uh, here, we're representing this as two holes as well, and I have a third. So if I have a pizza and cut it into three pieces, this is a third of a pizza, because the second slice, if you think about it, would be like this, and then the third slice would be so this is what a third looks like. Think about it, this is one out of three pieces, two out of three pieces, three out of three pieces. So if we cut the thing into three pieces and we only have one, we have this much. What we're saying is this much pizza 
is exactly the same amount as this much pizza. And of course you can see that because the one third is exactly the same thing as the two sixths right here, exactly the same thing. So these are equivalent. So we're going to continue down the road here doing this for all of these problems. We won't use the magnets for every problem, but here in the begin beginning we will. What about one and two tenths? How do I represent that? Well, put an equal sign. The whole number just comes along for the ride, doesn't change. The two tenths, we're going to try to simplify it. How are we going to do it? Well, we'll divide top and bottom because these are both divisible by two. And we'll get an answer of one and two divided by two is one. 10 divided by two is five, one and one fifth. And we're claiming that the fraction or the mixed number one and one fifth is exactly the same thing as one and two tenths. So let's see if this actually makes sense. Let me steal from the previous board one over here and two tenths. This is one tenth and two tenths. The slices are really small because the pizza is cut into 10 slices. That's two tenths. And then we're going to claim that this is exactly equal to one and one fifth but a fifth is actually a larger slice because the pizza is only cut into five slices there. You can kind of visualize two fifths and three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, and so on. So we're saying that this is exactly the same as this. And of course you can see that the one fifth exactly matches this. So this is exactly the same thing. It's just written in a different way. All right, let's take a look here at number four. Problem number four. We'll drop the magnets for a little bit. We'll come back to them, but let's try to do this one without, without any magnets at all. Two and 12 fifteenths. So we want to simplify this. So put a little equal sign. The whole number doesn't change to the 12 fifteenths. We believe we can simplify. How? What can we divide by? Well, we cannot divide by two because 15 will not be divisible by two, but we can divide by three. And what do we get? We get a whole number of two. 12 divided by three is four, because four times three is 12. And 15 divided by three is five, because five times three is 15. So I get two and four fifths, and that is the final answer, two and four fifths. And what we're saying is that two and four fifths pizzas is exactly the same thing as two and 12 fifteenths pizzas. They look completely different, but they represent exactly the same amount of stuff. All right, let's take a look at five and six ninths. So this would be five whole pizzas and then six out of nine slices of another pizza. How do we simplify this? The whole number just comes along for the ride. The six ninths we're going to try to simplify. Now we can divide, what can we divide by? We can't divide by two, but we can immediately see that we can divide by three. So we get a whole number of five, six divided by three is two, nine divided by three is three. Two times three is six, three times three is nine. So we believe the answer is five and two thirds, and this is exactly equal in, as far as how much uh, stuff it represents as five and six ninths. All right, now I want to take special care on the next problem here. Actually, I'm gonna need a couple of these magnets, so let me kind of drag these over here. All right, take special care in the next problem, because this is what I told you in the beginning, we have a couple of gotchas, this next problem is one I really do want you to pay attention to because it's a little different than the previous. Let's say we have the mixed number two and five halves, and we ask ourselves to simplify. Now, you might think there's nothing at all to do, right? Because the two is gonna come along for the ride, and then we try to simplify the five halves, but five and two, there's nothing I can divide the top and the bottom by, to make it simpler, five and two, it's already simple. So you might think you're done. Well, actually we need to think a little bit harder. Think about it, if you cover up the two here, what do you have here? The top number is a five, the bottom is a two. This is an improper fraction. Notice in all the other problems, this is a proper fraction. This is a proper fraction. This is a proper fraction where the top number is smaller. Here, the top number, the numerator is larger. Now, what does that mean? That means if you cover up the number two and just look at this, five halves has to be more than one pizza. Because if you think about it, two halves, two over two, is gonna be two out of two slices, one whole pizza. But I have five halves. So this improper fraction part actually is something bigger than one. It's something bigger than one, okay? So let's do this. You need to really think about this as being like this. When we see two and five halves, really what you're saying is it's like two plus five halves. 
That's really what it is. When you say one and two tenths, it's like one whole pizza plus two tenths, two whole pizzas plus 12 fifteenths, five whole pizzas plus six ninths. This is two whole pizzas plus five halves, but the five halves is actually an improper fraction. How do we turn it into a mixed number? We use division, remember? That's what we do. We go over to the side and we say five divided by two. Five divided by two. Now two times two is four, that's as close as I can get. I subtract and I have a remainder of one. And we said in order to figure out uh, the mixed number, you have to divide it and what you say is that this five halves is equal to a whole number of two, a remainder of one, and then over the same denominator of two. So what we're saying is that the five halves part of it is worth two and a half more pizzas by itself, right? How do we do that again? One more time. This is a division. Remember, if it was two over two, it would just be one whole pizza. But we don't have two over two. We have something way more than that. We have five halves, five over two. So you divide, and then you find out that it goes two whole times, two whole times, a remainder of one slice, and everything is in terms of halves. So this represents two and a half. So what happens is, remember that we said it was equal to two plus this. Well, it's really two plus this. Two plus two is four wholes, and then you have one half. So the answer to this is actually four and a half. And it doesn't look like it could possibly be four and a half, but the only reason it is is because this improper fraction is worth two and a half by itself. So anytime you see a mixed number that's impro or a, a, uh, improper fraction, change it to a mixed number and then add it to what you have before. And then you're going to find out that uh, since you had a, a whole number here, you just add the holes here and the fraction comes along. Now let's see if this actually makes any sense. What we said is that this fraction over here was worth two, right, plus five halves. So that's a lot of halves, right? So let's take a look at this. One half, then two halves, and three, I got all these upside down, of course. There's one half, there's two halves, there's three halves, there's four halves. Whoops, let me do it this way. And then this is five halves. Notice the original fraction was two whole pizzas plus one, not one half, not two halves, not three halves, not four halves, but five halves. One, two, three, four, five halves. And what we're saying is that when we rearrange it all and put it back together, this makes another whole pizza, this makes another whole pizza, and then we have a half left over. One, two, three, four with a half left over. That is why it's equal four and a half. Because when you have five halves, then you have way more than one whole pizza. You take what you have, you add it to what you had before, the, the whole number of two, and then you have the final answer. Then you have the final answer. All right, I wanna take these down actually and do the next problem underneath because it's going to be a similar idea and I don't, I wanna make sure and have enough room to not stress out about it. So let me take these down <clears throat> and then I have the next problem underneath that also I really want you to pay attention to. Let's take a look at the next problem. The next problem is one and 10 thirds. So we wanna simplify this. We don't think there's a way to simplify 10 thirds really because you can't divide top and bottom by something to make it simpler. But then you notice that if you cover up this one, the 10 thirds has gotta be worth something more than one. Because think about it, three thirds, three divided by three would be one. Three thirds would be one. I don't have three thirds, I have 10 thirds. I have something way more than one. So this is an improper fraction. And if you think about it, this is like one whole pizza plus 10 thirds additional. So what is the 10 thirds equal to? Well, to figure that out, we have to go off to the side. We take the 10, we divide by the three to convert improper to mixed. What do we do? Three times three is nine. That's as close as I can get. Subtract and I get a remainder of one. So what this means is it's one plus, what is this worth? It goes three whole times with a remainder of one out of three of a denominator into thirds. So again, you divide this, it goes three whole times and you have a remainder of one over the same denominator, three and a third. So what do you get here? Three plus one is four and one third. And so the answer to the problem is four and a third. So let's see if this makes sense. What we said was that we had initially, this guy here was, was one whole plus 10 thirds, 10 thirds. What I have here is one whole, that's what I started out, and I have 10 thirds. Okay, so let's put them down here. There's one, there's two thirds, there's three thirds, there's four thirds, there's five thirds, there's six thirds, there's seven thirds, there's eight thirds, there's nine thirds, there's 10 thirds. So I literally cut a pizza into three pieces, 
and that tells me what a third is, and I have 10 of those thirds. Now we start put, playing matchmaker and put them together in a puzzle. So this guy makes another hole. This guy over here makes another hole. This guy over here, of course, makes another hole like this. And then we have a third left over. So if I can just kind of kind of put that down there, I guess. One, two, three, four whole pizzas and a third of a pizza left over. That's why the answer is equal to four and a third. That's not something you're going to be able to just look at and understand. Like you can't look at that and say, oh yeah, it's worth, it's this much. You have to do the math. Take the improper fraction, like we learned before, convert it to mixed, and then just add the whole number parts, and then you get the answer there. All right, let's take a look at our final few problems. The next problem is seven and four sixteenths. All right, no improper fraction here. This is a proper fraction, so we just say seven and four sixteenths. What can I divide top and bottom by? Now, I could divide by two, um, but I would have to do the process twice because I also see a larger number I can divide by four on the top and the bottom. Seven and four divided by four is one. 16 divided by four is four because four times four is 16. So I have an answer of seven and one fourth. Seven and one fourth. All right, we're almost done. Let's take a look at the problem four and six fifths. Now we notice right away that this fraction here, the fractional part is improper. So we cannot divide top and bottom and simplify it that way, but we know that this is improper. So this is really like four plus whatever six fifths works out to be. How do we figure out what six fifths the improper fraction is here in terms of a mixed number? We take six and we divide it by five. Five times one is five. That's as close as I can get. Multiply, subtract, get a remainder of one. So what this means is it's four plus when you change this to mixed number, it goes one whole time with the remainder of one out of a denominator of five. It's the same process every time, and we have uh, explored that in the past. One whole time, remainder of one out of a denominator here. Add the whole numbers, five, one-fifth comes along for the ride, and the answer is five and one-fifth. So it doesn't look like it, but you already had four pizzas. This gave us another whole pizza plus a little bit left over. That's the final answer. All right, here's our very last problem. Let's take a look at the fraction two and seven fourths. Two and seven fourths. Again, we can't divide top and bottom here, but we do see it's a mixed number. So this is like two plus whatever seven fourths turns out to be. So let's go and figure out what seven fourths is. It's an improper fraction, seven divided by four. Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. That's too big, has to go one time. Four times one is four, subtract. Seven minus four is six, five, four, three. An answer of three, remainder is three. So this is two plus, this works out to be a whole number of one, a remainder of three out of a denominator of four. One and three fourths. And so then two plus one is three and three fourths. So again, it doesn't look like it, but this is worth two pizzas. This gives us another whole pizza plus some left over. So it's really three and three fourths pizzas left over. So the first few problems of this lesson uh, was kind of very simple, very similar to simplifying regular old fractions, right? And so we did some like that, but then we get into the part where we have some problems where we have a mixed number that involves an improper fraction and we showed how to simplify those. I really would like you to go through and solve all of these again, make sure you're getting the right answers, and then follow me on to part two. We'll wrap up your skills and get a little more practice with simplifying mixed numbers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.